get started. Um, I'm admitting people as we speak, um, but I'm Sherry Rosenblatt, uh, Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Cam Manufacturers Institute. Um, I want to welcome you to today's media event. Um, I'm going to put you all on mute. Um, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation um, that will be specifically for the media. So when we get to that point, we'll just ask you to make sure that you tell us your name, media affiliation, uh, but we'll get back to that in a minute, um, or at least in the next 20 minutes. Um, okay. So with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to Robert Budway um, to begin today's session. Robert? Thank you, Sherry. I'm Robert Budway, president of the CAM Manufacturers Institute, or CMI. CMI represents U.S. metal CAM manufacturers and their suppliers. Thank you to all the media and key stakeholders who are joining us today. I'm very excited about today's announcement and our aluminum beverage can recycling rate targets. Today represents a renewed and expanded effort to increase the U.S. aluminum beverage can recycling rate. I've been at CMI for more than 25 years, and during that time, I've witnessed how the aluminum can industry has consistently committed significant investments to raise our recycling rates. The targets we're announcing today represent the industry's promise to be sustainability leaders and responsible stewards of the planet. The targets include a 70% U.S. aluminum beverage can recycling rate by 2030. More on those targets and our approach to achieving them in just a bit. I now want you to hear directly from a CMI member on why they are making this commitment. First up is Jennifer Cumby, Arda Metal Packaging's Chief Sustainability Officer for Global Metal, explaining the importance of these recycling rate targets. Arda Metal Packaging is a leading global beverage can manufacturer and an important CMI member. Arda Metal Packaging is very pleased to align with aluminum beverage can manufacturer and aluminum can sheet producer members from CMI to set ambitious beverage can recycling rate targets. Now is the right time. We are seeing unprecedented demand for our infinitely recyclable aluminum beverage cans, and we need more used beverage cans to be recycled so we have the aluminum to build on the beverage cans industry leading 73% recycled content in the US. The bottom line is higher recycling rates and higher recycled content further establish the beverage can as a leader in carbon footprint reduction and solidify the beverage can as a perfect example of circular economy where recycled cans return to store shelves as new cans. Jennifer mentioned the importance of hitting our targets, which are 70% by 2030, 80% by 2040, and 90 plus percent by 2050. And when we reach them, it will result in significant environmental and economic impacts. Consider that if the aluminum beverage can recycling rate had been 70% in 2020, instead of the beverage industry leading 45%, there would have been approximately 25 billion more cans recycled. These 25 billion cans would have generated more than 400 million in revenue for the U.S. recycling system and resulted in energy savings that could power more than 1 million U.S. homes for an entire year. In other words, in 2020, each percentage increase in the aluminum beverage can recycling rate would have led to a nearly 17 million in revenue for the U.S. recycling system and an energy savings that could power more than 46,000 U.S. homes for a year. If you're interested in seeing how we calculate these impacts, check out our website, canrecyclingimpact.com. Now to hear more about the importance of these recycling rates, here's Keith Harrison, CEO of the Recycling Partnership, a national recycling nonprofit that is transforming recycling for good. The aluminum can industry has been committed to recycling for decades. They helped start the recycling partnership, and with these goals today, they're leaning in even further. We know that recycling is good for the economy and the environment, specifically carbon savings by making sure that those cans displace virgin material. That's why we're going to work hard with CMI and the aluminum can industry to make these goals a reality. Now, let me introduce Scott Breen, CMI's Vice President for Sustainability, who will talk us through more of the targets. Scott? All right, thank you, Robert. I am thrilled to share with you the commitment CMI members are making to achieve these aggressive recycling targets. 
It's because of their intimate involvement and serious pledge that I'm able to share this plan on their behalf. The CMI members supporting these targets are can manufacturers, Ardell Metal Packaging, CanPack, Crown Holdings, and Embossus, and aluminum can sheet suppliers Constellium, Kaiser Aluminum, Novellus, and Trieros Aluminum. So I want to set the stage here by presenting the current aluminum beverage can recycling rate and then talk about how it has shifted over time. What you're seeing are the results from the 2021 Aluminum Beverage Can Sustainability Key Performance Indicator document. This has data for 2020, and the update to these KPIs, which is produced in collaboration with the Aluminum Association, was also released today. The Aluminum Association represents aluminum production, fabrication, and recycling industries and their suppliers. And we, for years together, have transparently reported these metrics annually and put the aluminum cans performance against PET bottles and glass bottles. So I wanna to focus today on the consumer recycling rate, what you're seeing on your screen in the gray box. So that's an accurate representation of cans actually recycled, since it goes beyond collection by providing what percent of cans shipped by US producers are melted down for recycling, adjusted for imports and exports. The consumer recycling rate is what the can industry uses to report its recycling rate. And the US aluminum beverage can recycling rate, as Robert mentioned, was 45% in 2020. So I'm now going to turn it over to Matt Meenan, Senior Director of External Affairs at the Aluminum Association, who's going to talk about the change in the recycling rate over time. Thanks, Scott. Each year in our KPI report, we include a line graph showing the change in the aluminum cans U.S. recycling rate over time. Importantly, this rate reflects the number of cans actually melted in a furnace for recycling, not simply the material collected. So it's a very accurate depiction of the actual number of cans that get recycled each year. Our industry has been measuring this rate for decades, and for the past 20 years or so, we've averaged it around 50%, which is good, but not good enough. Aluminum beverage can producers are incredibly proud of their market-leading recycled rate, recycled content, value in the bin, and more, all of which you can find in our annual KPI report. But moving the needle on the headline recycling rate is incredibly important to our members, not to mention the environment and the economy generally. We're excited to work with our partners at CMI, particularly as we push for more container deposit systems across the country, which we think will help drive this rate in the right direction. Thanks. All right, I'm glad Matt mentioned moving the needle because we have four pillars of action to do just that and make progress on our targets. So the four pillars of action. The first one, catalyze the passage and implementation of well-designed deposits at the state and federal levels, increase and improve household and away from home recycling, ensure that more cans are properly sorted at recycling centers, and then the fourth one, increase consumer understanding on the importance of aluminum can recycling and the ability to collect and sell used beverage cans for cash. So I'm gonna give you a bit of detail now on each one of these, as well as the action CMI with the support of its members plans to take in each pillar in 2022. But I also wanna note that a detailed roadmap is gonna come out next year and how we're gonna use these pillars to make progress on our targets. So the first one, deposits. This is really core to how we're gonna move the needle on recycling rates. It's clear from the data that the recycling rates in the 10 states that have deposits are higher than those in the non-deposit states. And CMI's active engagement on deposits is not new. You can see that over the past couple of years, we have started being more public about how deposits get more cans back, and the right way to design a deposit system. And what is new though, is that we actually just formed a joint deposits task force. This is with the Aluminum Association to push for well-designed deposit systems at the federal level and in key states. So importantly, while writing articles has value, we're gonna to continue to do that. This task force though is choosing where we wanna be active on the ground. So this is a very serious push that we're embarking on. Now, to hear more about this effort and the impact more deposits can have, I'm gonna turn now to some of our aluminum supplier members. First, Rafael Thevenon, Vice President for Marketing and Sales at Constellium, and then Kyle Hines, Director of Sustainability at tri -Aeros Aluminum. Aluminum can sheet producers, such as Constellium, recycled last year in the US, nearly 47 billion aluminum beverage cans. This is the equivalent of more than 130 cans per American, which are recycled every year. And 40% of those cans came from just the 10 states that have a deposit system. We at Constellium support well-designed deposit system so that we have additional used beverage cans to turn into new cans in as little as 60 days. 
Therefore, we're excited to collaborate with the industry leaders to support the implementation of new deposit systems in the US. Cheers. Trials Aluminum, a leader in aluminum recycling and rolling, is excited to collaborate with our fellow aluminum can sheet producers, as well as leading aluminum beverage can manufacturers to support a joint effort to advocate for additional deposit systems. Consumers are rightfully demanding more cans made from aluminum due to its infinite recyclability. We want to meet that growing demand with can sheet like ours, and we want to do it with even more recycled content. Deposit systems will provide the scrap resource we need to deliver on that ambition. Okay, so in addition to deposits, we also know that increasing the amount of and access to recycling at home and away from home will lead to more cans recycled. So I first wanna show you this data from the Recycling Partnership. It shows that as household access increases, less aluminum beverage cans are lost to the trash. For example, households with drop-off access sent 17 pounds of aluminum cans on average per year to the trash. That's out of the 20 pounds per year that were generated. That compares to households with curbside access and robust education sending only eight pounds of aluminum beverage cans to the trash. That's less than half, right? So here's a video from another CMI member. We've got Spooner Ward, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Novellus, a major aluminum can sheet supplier, on the industry support of the Recycling Partnership's Recycling Access Work. Novellus is proud to support the Recycling Partnership. It is pleased that CMI, Novellus, and others in the industry will continue to do so in 2022 as well. TRP does important work to expand household recycling access across the U.S., such as through its Recycling Car Grant Program. And this makes available more aluminum scrap for Novellus and other aluminum suppliers to recycle back into new aluminum sheet for our customers. Okay, so while most cans are consumed at the home, a significant number are also consumed away from the home while driving, at events, on the beach, places like that. And in 2022, CMI is going to explore setting up a partnership with a charity to collect cans at a venue that uses or primarily uses cans. And CMI knows where those places are because we've been tracking for a couple years now all the venues, businesses, and other away from home locations that have committed to no longer selling single use plastic PED bottles, since these commitments are likely to lead to these organizations going toward aluminum cans. Now you can see that growing list at cancentral.com slash PET band tracker. And we plan to use this running list as a starting point for where to set up the charity collection program that we're exploring next year. For more on the importance and promise of collecting cans for cash, here's a short video from John Omeloin, Global Sustainability Director at CanPack Group, another aluminum beverage can manufacturer. Did you know that aluminum beverage cans have actually got quite a high economic value? This is an opportunity for Americans to collect cans for cash. Now, obviously, you can keep the money yourself, or you could donate the money raised and give it to a good cause. That's what the children at Brunswick Elementary School did. The money they raised helped fund food, breakfast and lunch for children in need. Also, the Girl Scouts in Wisconsin, they used the money to pay for their Apple Fest. Good, eh? I'm really proud of the targets we've been put in place. They're ambitious, but we can achieve it together. And just think, the more cans you collect, you're helping the environment and you're also helping a good cause or yourself. All right, I love those case studies that John mentioned. He's certainly spurring me to want to collect cans for cash. And uh, beyond that, if CMI is also successful in its deposits pillar of action, more deposits are going to help reduce litter and increase away from home recycling. And further, we hope to spur that organic collection of cans for charity by spreading awareness via our cansforcash.com website that people can collect aluminum beverage cans and then sell them for cash to donate to the charity of their choice. So I'm going to talk about that more in just a bit because spreading awareness of this ability to sell cans for cash is part of another pillar. So that's a larger point here that I want to make sure to make is that I'm presenting each of these as separate pillars, but there's actually quite a bit of overlap among them. So having said that, let's 
get into another specific pillar here. Pillar number three, sortation at recycling centers. This is our third pillar. And ensuring proper sortation at material recovery facilities or MRFs uh, is important for our work. Uh, MRFs do the important task of sorting single stream recyclables by material. So CMI published a report in 2020 that found that even though used beverage cans or UBCs for short, are one of the most valuable commodities in the recycling stream, and that MRFs wouldn't be able to operate without the revenue from UBCs with their current business models, there is some missortation that occurs at recycling centers. And the missortation actually occurs before the facility runs the material through eddy currents, which are how aluminum containers are sorted out, and they're very effective in doing that. So CMI members, Ardon Crown, they generously funded a can capture grant program in partnership with the recycling partnership to catalyze additional can capture equipment at MRFs. Just two days ago, we announced a grant to the city of Milwaukee and Waukesha County. This was the fourth can capture grant as part of this program. Collectively, the four, just these four grants, they're gonna to lead to the installation of can capture equipment that's gonna catch 67 million aluminum beverage cans a year that likely would have otherwise been misorted. And when these 67 million aluminum beverage cans are recycled each year, that's gonna generate more than a million dollars in revenue for the US recycling system and energy savings that could power more than 26 million US homes for an hour. For more on this program, I'd like to turn to John Rost, Vice President of Global Sustainability and Regulatory Affairs for Crown Holdings. Crown Holdings, along with Arda Metal Packaging, understood that losing missorted cans at the recycling centers was a significant problem. So we worked with CMI and the Recycling Partnership to set up and fund this can capture grant program. We are proud knowing that millions of infinitely recyclable aluminum beverage cans that would have been lost will now be recycled because of this program. We plan to provide continued support for additional can capture equipment at recycling centers with the ultimate goal of spurring more recycling centers to invest in their own equipment. These investments will quickly pay off given the high value of recycled aluminum beverage cans. Okay, thank you, John. And I know CMI with the support of Ardon Crown plans to continue giving out grants next year, but we're also exploring a lease to own program. So this, this would be an innovative approach where we would pay for the upfront cost of the equipment and get paid back over time with some portion of the revenue from the cans captured with the new equipment. Okay, pillar number four, now the last one, uh, this focuses on increasing understanding of the importance of aluminum can recycling and the ability to collect and sell beverage cans for cash. So to give you a sense of where we're at in consumer understanding, let me tell you about a survey that CMI commissioned of U.S. consumers that showed they don't understand the can sustainability advantages, such as Metal Recycles Forever, and that the aluminum can has by far the highest average amount of recycled content among beverage containers at 73%. One example is that when we asked U.S. consumers if they agree that aluminum is able to be recycled forever, in other words, over and over again, only 38% of the U.S. consumers in this national survey said they agree with that statement, and it's true. So we believe uh, increased consumer understanding of the can's sustainability advantages will lead to increased recycling of cans. CMI intends to communicate more about the aluminum can sustainability story and advantages, and we want to enable others to do so too. To that end, this year, CMI released its Aluminum Beverage Can Sustainability Communications Toolkit. It has downloadable graphics, stats with citations that anyone can use in newsletters, social media posts, just to name a few places. The toolkit can be found at cancentral.com slash sustainability toolkit. We plan to keep enhancing this toolkit, including more content around how most all recycled aluminum beverage cans become new cans. And we actually added a short video just the other day that shows the 60-day journey cans take from recycling bin back to store shelf as a new can. So in 2022, we plan to do some on-the-ground communications work in the communities in which the industry has invested in can capture equipment at the local MRF. That way, more used beverage cans show up to the front door at the MRF that is equipped to then properly sort these cans to be recycled. So we're enabling others. We want to do some on-the-ground work where we've already invested in the MRFs. But also, the industry sees recycling messaging on the can is a precise way to reach consumers who have cans to recycle and motivate them to put them in the bin. CMI members plan to encourage beverage brands to adopt messaging on cans that emphasizes their sustainable advantages. So people realize the importance of recycling their cans. Metal Recycles Forever, it's a globally used logo. Cans Infinitely Recyclable, that's a CMI logo. Both make the needed point 
They're freely available to use with a quick license agreement for anyone that wants it. We also believe if more people and organizations understood cans can be collected and then sold for cash, this would increase can recycling. To spread that awareness and make it easy for people to start collecting cans for cash, CMI this year launched cansforcash.com. It has a map from iScrap app where users can find the metal scrapyard closest to them, the thousands across the country. It has information so people can see how much money they would receive, helpful hints for can collection, and case studies for inspiration. We're gonna con conduct activities in all four pillars, okay? So because each has demonstrated the ability to get significantly more cans recycled. But I wanna emphasize that the one that's gonna most move the needle is deposit systems. So now to talk about the core part of the plan, catalyzing new deposit systems, I wanna bring in Rick Siegel, Director of Sales at Kaiser Aluminum. Given that the average recycling rate for aluminum beverage cans in the 10 deposit states is 77%, we know one scenario to achieve aluminum beverage can recycling rate targets is a national deposit system. The industry, however, has also done modeling on what it would take to achieve targets in the absence of a national deposit system. The model shows that it would take several states enacting new deposit systems in addition to at home and away from home recycling. Since new deposit systems are central to achieving our industry targets, as well as increasing recycled content in the can sheet that companies like mine, Kaiser Aluminum, along with others produce, we are proud to support the industry's new aluminum beverage can recycling rate targets and advocate together for new deposit systems in the United States. All right, thank you, Rick. So Rick mentioned uh, that we've done some modeling on how we're going to achieve these targets, what it's going to take in each of these four pillars. And we're going to have more details on that modeling, on the activities we're doing in each of them, in a roadmap that we're going to publish next year. So keep an eye out for that. And I just want to say how excited I am, how excited everyone is about these targets and our renewed and expanded effort to have more cans complete the circular journey into new cans. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And I want to pass it back to Robert. Thank you, Scott. And thank all of you for your time and attention today. A recording of this media event, along with a press release, will be sent following this call to all those who registered. The press release will also be posted in the Media Center on cancentral.com. The recording will also be posted and distributed through CMI's social media channels on Facebook at Can Central, and sorry, at Cans Recyclable, and on LinkedIn. Everything can be found at cancentral.com slash targets. If you have additional questions after today's event, please feel free to contact Scott Breen at sbreen at cancentral.com. Sherry, I'll turn it over back to you. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Scott. Um, now is our time for questions and answers. Um, if anyone from the media would like to ask a question specifically on today's announcement, uh, we're happy to address those now. And we'd like you for you to remember to tell us your name, your media affiliation, and now would be the time to Take yourself off mute and ask a question. Well, we know Scott and Robert were so thorough um, that maybe you don't have any questions or maybe you do and uh, you'd like to ask them independently with Scott. And as Robert mentioned, you can contact him directly at sbreen at cancentral.com. Um, and there will be a recording of this. The press release should have hit your inbox. Um, and it looks like Megan Quinn from Waste Dive is asking a question. Megan, do you want to ask your question or shall I read it from the chat? Okay, I'll read it for you. Um, it's Megan Quinn from Waste Dive. Can you say more about the effort um, to, um, can you say more about the effort to move to state federal deposit systems? Any states you think would be a good place to start? Yeah, so uh, I wanna go back to what I emphasized before that we see new deposit systems as core to moving the needle on recycling rates. That's why we set up this joint deposits task force. So it's the Can Manufacturers Institute and the Aluminum Association, the government relations, sustainability communications folks at each organization, we're, we're helping to run this task force with and there's aluminum can sheet producers that are part of the committee as well as uh, beverage can manufacturers. And collectively, we're gonna decide on those key states that we want to be more active in. And uh, again, the decision's gonna be made collectively. 
but I imagine it's going to be states where there's a lot of cans used and going to landfill, uh, but also states where we think politically we can get something passed because that's ultimately what we need to do, get new deposit systems so we get more scrap back and then incorporate it into new cans. Thank you, Scott. Um, there looks like there is another question from Mark McCord. Um, are any of these targets dependent on policymakers getting behind them? Mark McCord, the can maker. Yes, I mean, some, well, yes, deposit systems, that's a policy decision, right? So we're engaging lawmakers, educating them on the difference in recycling rates that exist for aluminum beverage cans and deposit states versus non-deposit states as well as our industry's best practice principles as to what leads to an efficient, effective, well-designed deposit system. Uh, but some of the other pillars of action, no, you don't necessarily need a policymaker's job. The Can Capture Grant Program, there were no policymakers involved. We had generous funding from uh, Ardell Metal Packaging and Crown Holdings. We set up a nice partnership with the Recycling Partnership to help us. We had MRF Supply be in our, our request for proposals and then you know, we gave them grants and provide them technical assistance, and we're going to capture many millions more cans a year with that. Uh, with communications, some of it comes down to um, us enabling others to share for us. You know, we're trying to share our story in more effective and new ways. Uh, and then uh, the the other pillar. Um, so th those are those are what we're going to do. Um, yeah. So some of them are policy, and some aren't. Okay, it looks like there's a continuation. Sorry, there's yeah. questions that are coming in. Um, so um, Alex Fordham from the Metal Packager, um, thanks for the CMI for an excellent presentation. My question is playing as devil's advocate following Metal Packager Europe's announcement of 100% recycling of beverage cans by 2030. Are the targets in the US a little on the conservative side? Well, yeah, first I'll give kudos to our friends in Europe for setting that target. It's very ambitious. Uh, we here, we had to think about where we're at, right? And where the U.S. recycling system is at. Now, we have an industry leading recycling rate, um, but the reality is the recycling system in the United States um, has some improvement to make. You know, the other pillar of action I should have mentioned in my last answer was around uh, household access. You know, there's many people in this country that don't have curbside access. If they had it, that would increase uh, the amount of beverage cans that we would get back. Uh, so we had to think about, okay, we're at 45%. What's ambitious, but also realistic? And that's how we ended up at that 70% by 2030 number. There's, of course, the, the longer term ones, 80% by 2040, 90% plus by 2050. But we think that 70% by 2030 number, I mean, that's, like Robert mentioned, if we were to have hit 70% in 2020, that's 25 billion more cans recycled. We got to get 25 billion more cans recycled a year within nine years. And we think the best way to do that is with new deposit systems, but that is a tough task. But to the credit of CMI members, they've committed to it and we're, we're gonna work hard to make it happen. So the next question is from Deanne Toto at Recycling Today. Would a federal deposit system be preferable to a state-by-state -state approach? How likely is this in the current environment? So we would love to see a national deposit system that's efficient and effective and in line with our industry's best practice principles. Certainly that would lead to the quickest and largest impact, right? Because we mentioned how the you know, average aluminum beverage can recycling rate in the current 10 states that have a deposit is 77%. So if you buy it nationally, we've already reached our target, right? So we'd like to see that. It also helps avoid a patchwork of systems that uh, not only the can, can manufacturers have to comply with, but everyone else needs to comply with. So it's got some efficiency reasons for it, as well as just impact reasons. Um, but having said that, we don't want to sit back and put all our eggs in one basket. That's why the Joint Task Force is going to decide on some key states to advocate for on the ground and hopefully make some new deposit systems there. Well, that seems to be all of the questions. It is 11.31 Eastern time. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their time, their attention, the media for your questions. Scott and Robert, thank you. And this will end today's media event. So thank you very much and have a terrific day.